Well, this is John Black, Super Chemist. These are my molecular seeds down here. They're 3A, 3 Angstrom. I've never used them, but they've been sitting in a box in a bag for like two, three years now. So I want to regenerate them just to make sure. Because I, I did this alcohol here. Look at that. Molecular seeds all the way up to there. I should have only had them, you know, a little bit. Like, you know. But I put in twice as much because they're I didn't know how good they were. So I just, might as well just regenerate them and make sure they're perfect. Uh, Angstrom or 3A Angstrom, I mean 3 Angstroms or 3A. Angstrom means uh, just a, a, a size, you know what I mean? I think it's 100 picometers. But they they use that for, uh, you know, uh, molecule scale stuff, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the, like the hydrogen is on a molecule is, you know, 100 mic picometers or 150 picometers from the carbon atom. You know, that kind of thing. So that 100 picometers, that'd be one extra. Anyways, we're going to put this in the oven, just like anything that you're drying out. You know, you got to be above 212, right? Because that's what temperature water boils at, right? So the lowest you can do this at 250. I don't suggest you do it that low. Um, molecular sieves, really anywhere from 250 to 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh... I'm going to do it for 400 degrees for two hours. And you see I got my round bottom plants here. And I also got a cap. That way as soon as they get done, I can throw them into the uh, round bottom flask, right? Cap it. Wait for it to cool down. And then I can use this. See, I got the little vacuum attached. Put it on there and put a vacuum on this just to double check, just to make sure, see what it's like. You can do it both at the same time. Just put these in here and put a vacuum on it and heat it up while the vacuum's on there. Um, but we're going to do it this way. We'll try it next time. I'll do it the other way. So there we go. Well, that's pretty much it. I mean, you just heat it up. I put them all into this flask here and you can see I got it where I got a valve on there. I'll put this hose on. That's it. Now I got a vacuum on there. Closed up the valve. Now I can store this. I won't we'll get water out on it, you know what I mean? When I want to use it, I can take it out. You know what I need? Put it, put this back on and put another vacuum on it. Alright, I'm going to do what Nerd Rage did in his video and see if this spikes. This, uh... Holy crap! Yes, it spiked. Went from 10 degrees to uh, 30 degrees and it's still going up. So we'll come back and see how much that is later on. This is 35, 36. I want you to. The, the thing I just did with the water adding them to the sieves, it did a spike of uh, 35 degrees Celsius. Okay, it jumped up 35 degrees. I mean, it probably should have been maybe 60, 70 degrees jump, so they're not perfect, that's for sure. Now, I did the same thing with methanol. I didn't show it, uh, but uh, I put some molecular sieves in there, just like I did with the water. I poured some methanol on it, and there was a spike immediately, 5, five degrees Celsius. An hour later, I noticed it was, or a half hour later, 20 minutes later, whatever, I noticed it had spiked uh, 10 degrees. So it is absorbing methanol. Um, if you want to see, I mean, Nerd Rage has a better video on that. Um, go check it out where he does the same thing. Um, I would have never even thought about the methanol. Now, I put it in this ethanol here, and it's not soaking up the ethanol, so hopefully there's just some uh, 4A uh, holes in the sieves. 
instead of five or six where it's going to soak up the ethanol too, you know what I mean? Uh, so they're not great, but as you'll see, they do work. All right, so two videos ago, I did uh, anhydrous ethanol, how to make vodka anhydrous, and it didn't work. All right, I mean, don't get me wrong. If you follow the video, that's exactly how you do it. The only problem was, is after three days of storing, the alcohol with molecular sieves, I had the same density, which means I have the same, it didn't soak up any water. <clears throat> the reason why is because those were old sieves. They were sitting in a bag for two years. I was just thinking, well, maybe since they were in plastic bags, you know, they didn't absorb that much water. Apparently, they absorbed all water. So I regenerated it, as you've seen. I distilled some more vodka. I put the regenerated seeds in there. Now it's only been a day, and it's almost anhydrous. Okay. Uh, so uh, it, do, it does work. I just got put in a little bit extra seeds. Anyways. It's a nice, easy video. Hope you all have a great day, and always remember, science is great. Anyways, I just wanted to show this right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, a stir rod in there. See how it's vertically standing up and down? Um, the reason I put that in there, that's because when I put more than half or, or even half uh, of my pot you know what I mean I got, you're only supposed to put a half in not more than half that's for sure but even if I put half in I like to do that with the straw because it helps with bumping because if you think about it if a big bubble creates it has to slice through that vertical stir rod and when it does it will break the bubble you know what I mean I'm not saying you can jack it up to a million degrees you know what I mean? There's an extent of how much it'll work. But it'll definitely help when you're worried about bumping on a specific uh, experiment or whatever. See how it just goes straight up and down no matter what. It's going to have to slice through there if any big bubbles cre are created. Anyways, you all have a great day. And remember, science is great.